What's the worst excuse for cheating that you have heard or used? Number one, yeah, all of these are bad, but I don't know why. It's worse than even the stupidest reason here. At least you have something. What do you mean I don't know? I don't know. How could you not know? Why aren't you telling me? Because I don't know. Is it because you're unhappy with me? I'm not giving you something? No, I'm so happy with you. I love you so much. You did nothing wrong. That's clearly not true if you feel the need to cheat. No, it isn't about you. Q sobbing now. I couldn't live if I lost you. Then why? I don't know. I think you do, but you just don't want to tell me. I think there might be something wrong with me. I'm sick. Then get help. Don't cheat on me. I know, I know. I'm so sorry. I wasn't thinking. I walk away in disgust while he cries. Number two. When my ex and I broke up, she confessed to me that she was getting close with one of my friends, and they'd do things together. My friend stayed silent and never said anything at the time. It hurts, but I considered forgiving my friend if he apologized at least somewhat sincerely. But he only apologized once and tried to push the incident to the side. I was sad that I lost a close friend and even regretted it for a while, hoping we could be friends again in the future that it was just a temporary thing because my ex did the worst thing she could do, and she even brought it up after all that was over just to make her feel good that she already confessed it. She didn't think of the outcome that could arise between me and my friends, that after some time had passed, I was glad that she confessed. I now know that this guy isn't worth being my friend. I'm good now. It still hurts and makes me mad when I think about it, but it doesn't bother me as much. It is regrettable that a group of friends suffered collateral damage from this, but most of them stuck with me. While others, if not completely cut off from me and stuck with the other guy, I tried to be in the middle and still remain in contact with, or play, with the both of us. I can't and won't make them stop, because it is not my right to tell people who to be friends with, even though I don't like it. Number three, you aren't exactly my type. An actual quote after three years of living together, she also did this during my last semester in college, so it was a really rough ride navigating that, finishing classes, and applying for jobs. To top it all off, we were still living together at the time. Not fun, zero, don't recommend. If anyone is reading this and is in a similar situation, do whatever you can to get away from it. I don't really start healing until she was entirely out of my life. What happened was that, according to her, they were never dating. But when he messed around with some other girl at work, she was pretty upset and she stopped talking to him. It was kind of nice to see that instant karma stuff. At the same time, I hated seeing her hurt. But I also know her past and stuff. She found another guy within a few weeks of me moving out, though. They seem to be doing good. I don't talk to her anymore. So I'm not sure how she is or if she's still with that guy. I've been trying to move on for about a year now. I've been on a couple of dates, but I can tell I'm not ready for another relationship. I still need to get more comfortable with myself. I think it's just a convenience thing. It made everything easy for her, so I think that's why we lasted as long as we did. It was tough, but I'm still here, obviously. I tanked my self-esteem, but I'm getting better. I just hope that the next person in my life will be a bit more considerate. You'd think that if a couple made it past a couple of months, they'd be attracted to each other. Their realization was three years too late, man. Number four, this one happened to a good friend of mine. I was with him just after this little gem was dropped on him and it took him some time to recover. I actually wasn't cheating on you. I was dating the other guy's name first, so I was actually cheating on him. Madam President of the Society of Pedantics didn't see an issue with what she said. My friend is doing well. He stopped dating for a while to focus on himself and improve his own situation. It's a little over a year after the breakup with his ex and he's doing well in life. I'm so sorry to everyone who's had a similar or the same thing happen to them. You deserve better. Remember, you are loved. There are people who genuinely love you in your life. If you have someone in your life who fakes loving you, you don't deserve that. They don't deserve you. I'm president of the Society of Pedantics. That was gold and fitting for the situation. Number five. I noticed that instead of saving money, we were losing about 6,000 of our savings per month. We had a specific dollar girl to put a down payment in the house. When I looked into it, I found out my ex-wife was spending over 6000 a month. She got upset and said that she should be allowed to do whatever she wanted with her money. She had been buying random URL names in the hopes that 
One would be the name of an up-and-coming business that would have to buy it from her, like a pan troll but with her websites. I'd been working hard to pick up extra work travel to save money for us, and then I took up even more work trips to make up for the losses and get us back on track to buy a home. After that, whenever I returned home, she was cold and distant. I tried to be affectionate to her, and she told me to hook up with other women while on my work trips because she wasn't in love with me anymore. She said she loved me like a cousin and hoped we could continue being married, but in a non-traditional way, meaning she could still spend all my money. When I found out she had been cheating, she said that she stopped loving me when I criticized her use of her savings and then started traveling more, which gave her time to reconnect with an ex. She had broken up with an ex about ten years prior when he became a pill-popping dude. When they reconnected, he was clean, so she left me for him. So the reasons were, number one, I shouldn't have been upset about her using her savings to buy website names instead of a down payment and a house. Two, if I didn't get upset at the loss of all those savings, I wouldn't have picked up more work, giving her the time and space to reconnect with her ex. Number three, she always loved him, and he was clean now. Number six, I dated a girl who told me that she was straight. After our relationship ended, she told me that she had known that she was bi for years. That would be fine. I'm bi too. It would be fine if we hadn't agreed that it was all right for her to kiss girls the whole time we were together. So naturally I was hurt and asked, why didn't you just tell me? She said, I didn't want to lose the option to kiss my friends. Like what? Then don't be in a relationship. He has to clarify if she were straight in my circle. That's pretty normal. Maybe that's weird or maybe that's a cultural thing. I live in Denmark after all. Also, we were still very young at the time. Also, if I had a boyfriend who was gay, at the time I would probably allow him to kiss his female friends as well. It's more about having nothing to worry about. I get that it may be hard to get, but that was just my mindset at the time. The point of the post is not what I count as cheating, but that she wasn't honest. I also remembered that she told me three months into the relationship that if she was hypothetically bi, it would be still okay for her to kiss her friends. I said, no, it's not okay for me to kiss my friends either because I'm pan. Yes, the world hypothetical threw me off, and yes, I am that gullible. Number seven. You know how I love my dog? I want to pet it every day, but when I see another dog, I want to pet it too. It doesn't mean I don't love my dog. I just stared at her and said, did you seriously just compare me to your dog? Also, same girl. But it was just part of a pagan ritual. That doesn't count. We actually sat down to discuss what counts as cheating after that. She asked if she managed to project her consciousness into a cat. It would be cheating to be with another cat, because she was always curious about what it felt like to be a cat. I told her that if she managed to project her consciousness into a cat, she should come to me so I could pet her before she went off to be intimate with other cats. Needless to say, their relationship didn't last long. I thought, what am I doing with this crazy girl? I want to get married and have kids and that's never going to happen with her. I met my wife a few months later and we have two kids together. Number eight. I'll never forget my first semester in college. I met a girl in Psychology 101 who shared with the whole class that her boyfriend cheated on her. She said she was going to forgive him because his reason for cheating was that he had never slept with a black girl before and wanted to know what it was like. Man, can't believe that classmate bought that never slept with a black girl excuse. If that's a legit reason, he's got a whole bucket list to work through. Anyway, if you're on the same wavelength, hit the like button and let's dive into more wild cheating stories on my channel. Stay tuned. Number 9. I was with my ex-wife in 2011 and married her in 2015. By some point in 2019, she wanted to divorce me. But I didn't understand why because our relationship was great. I didn't get it. I did everything she wanted. Nothing made any sense. I was so confused there was no justifiable reason why she wanted to leave me. She wasn't even that adamant about the divorce either, which confused me even more. Why even tell me if you aren't going to follow through with it? I had this feeling that someone who hates me must have been telling her something about me, and she must have been believing them. I couldn't think of anything else that would warrant her behavior. I never really even wanted to look at her phone at all. I never suspected cheating. But one day she accidentally forgot it in my car. 
She received several texts from one of her coworkers, so I had to check it to make sure it wasn't some urgent work-related thing. The CO worker was telling her about this other dude that my ex-wife was in love with. She was telling her how the dude is married and now has kids on the way and maybe she should end that. It shocked me. Never saw that coming. I looked further and found that she's been cheating on me since 2017. That was two years of that stuff, and I had no idea. Now she wanted to divorce me? Like, why didn't you do it in 2017 when all that started? So she wasted an additional two years of my life for no reason? I mean, I'm glad I found out. Imagine if I never found out, and she divorced me, and I had no idea what even happened. He was her boss. They've worked together since 2013. He was one of the owners of a company that did medical fraud. The government found out and has been investigating them for many years. I think all the owners and some other employees are now in jail, so their relationship didn't really last. It took me two to three weeks to confront her about it. She initially lied and pretended not to know what I was talking about until I showed her evidence. I took pictures of everything. I wanted to make things work between us. She even claimed to want to work things out, too. Divorce was no longer on the table for her. She refused to go to couples therapy, though. I was kind of destroyed, though, so I decided to go to therapy. After four months of therapy, I realized that I could no longer trust her, no matter what I tried to do. That was when I called it quits and divorced her myself. Therapy absolutely helped me. I realized she'd been manipulating me for many years, and I just kept letting everything go. I allowed her to disrespect me, and I never stood up for myself. I went to therapy with the goal of maybe helping me get over the cheating and stayed married to her. My therapist just wanted me to be a better me, and through that, I realized I shouldn't accept the bad treatment anymore. It's absolutely worth it, and I absolutely recommend it. Number 10. I came home early from work to find my last ex in bed with another guy. I wasn't trying to hurt you. I didn't think you would find out. I came home early because I spelled a fryer in my leg and she ignored my call for a ride because she was busy messing around with someone else. I'm still mad when I think about it. Isn't one of the reasons why you don't cheat is because you would hurt them if they found out and not because you didn't want them to find out so they won't get hurt? I'm seriously scratching my head on this girl's logic. Number 11. Hmm. I think the first one was, I'm sorry, this was my first girlfriend from high school, a six-month relationship. The second girl said, you should understand. I mean, look at you, then look at me. This was just before I dropped out of high school, and she was the hot, popular girl in senior year, while I was just some short but skilled basketball player. A relationship that lasted for a year and a half. The third girl cheated on me while I was at my best friend's funeral several hundred miles away. Her dad, who we lived with, caught her and called me. I never heard what she had to say about it since I blocked her on everything and whatever voicemail she left was erased immediately. This one hurt the most because her dad was amazing and was the closest thing to a father I ever had. Two years. Fourth girl was a couple years later, and that was probably actually psychotic because when I caught her cheating, she never said anything but got dressed and left. Then she had me jump a couple days later and left as it happened. One year. Fifth girl, I found out I was her backup while her main man was working out of state and saw her on the weekends. He did not know about me. I, for real, thought I found the one with this one. I was a couple thousands away from buying a house and engagement ring, and then she saved me a lot of money. Three years. So, yeah, every girl I've ever dated has cheated on me. I quit dating after the last one. It was the worst. It's been about five years or so. I'm lonely, but I'd rather that than be cheated on again. The last one was the worst pain I'd ever felt, and I genuinely thought about eating a bullet for a while. But whatever, I won't get the satisfaction of breaking me. Number 12. About a decade ago, I had my suspicions, and I caught my longtime girlfriend cheating when I logged into her Facebook page and read her messages. There were like three to four dudes in her DMs with graphic, graphic conversations about stuff they'd done and wanted to do. The first thing I did was text her an apology for going through her Facebook. But then I told her she could pick up her things and get out of my life. She didn't even acknowledge the cheating accusations. The first thing she did was give me trouble for logging into her Facebook. What a messed up relationship that was. Number 13, these are the reasons he gave me. Number one, I'm tight with my friends. Number two, I've got guy friends. Number three, 
I wasn't ready to say I love you days into the relationship. Mind you, he cheated on me from the get-go till the relationship ended, despite me telling him that I'd like it to be exclusive. Number four, he was insecure about who I was with because I was outgoing. Number five, he couldn't end things with his ex because she was helping him a lot professionally. Number six, whenever he broke up with her, she would cry and that would turn him on. Number seven, he said it was all because of me. Number 14, I performed a soul retrieval on him and discovered that he was my soulmate for thousands of past lives and thousands of lives into the future. I was told this out of the blue after a 21-year relationship and 18 years of marriage with two small children. I am with another woman now and very happy. I definitely learned about my needs and values through this process and found someone who fits me quite well. Story 15. I am happily married now to a wonderful guy, but prior to that, I was cheated on twice. High school boyfriend's excuse, I used to be fat and insecure and it felt good knowing another woman beside you wanted me and I didn't want to disappoint her. College boyfriend's excuse, you were too busy taking your mom to chemo treatments every Friday so I felt ignored. Man, I thought the first excuse was already flimsy but the second one just blew me over. Number 16. I was going to tell you eventually but I wanted to make sure that me and the other guy had a genuine connection first. I was given this line and shortly after I went off the deep end for a while. I relied heavily on booze. She implied that in order to make sure she and her new boyfriend had a real connection, she went over to his place several times. She even took him back to her place, which is where I found them. Number 17. I always felt I missed you was the worst, literally implying it was my fault for not being around the moment she got frisky. She decided to text her ex, invited him over, played around, and continued on. Or was on a family vacation, and since I wasn't there, her cousin was. Or when I went off to college, this school IT guy, the guy was 19 years older than her, was available. Or when she went to her high school prom with her best friend, female, who is now my best friend and got together with my former best friend in the locker room because she missed me and I wasn't there. Hate this girl. Number 18. I know nobody will read this, but I just got out of an eight-month relationship that ruined my life completely. The straw that broke the camel's back was her excuse for cheating on me. She admitted to me that she slept with her ex during the time I was visiting my parents in another state. Her excuse for cheating was, I wanted to see if you loved me enough to stay after I did it. So that's probably the dumbest excuse I've ever heard for cheating. Number 19. One night I gave her my debit card to go to the bar to get drinks with her friend. She called me while she was extremely buzzed and asked me to come get her, which of course I did. She threw up all over my new car and couldn't even walk. I carried her nearly half a mile from the complete back of her college parking lot into her dorm room and held her hair while she threw up again. Then, as I put her on her bed, she tells me, I don't need a babysitter, and I'm like, oh, babe, clearly you do. She fell asleep and later fell off her platform dorm bed straight into the floor and didn't even notice. I put her back in bed, and the rest of the night I just had that horrible feeling that she definitely cheated on me. About 4 a.m., her Snapchat went off from some dude she's never mentioned, so I checked her phone. This dude sends a shirtless picture of himself with the caption, I had a great time tonight, and you're a great kisser. Later, my girlfriend woke up and I just stared at her and asked, so how was your night? She goes, oh. Later on, she says, we just don't have that Disney movie magic. I didn't have respect for myself when I was younger and stayed with her a while longer after she swore she'd never do it again. She was actually best friends with one of my best friends, and a few weeks later, she cheated again. Not only did we never talk again, but her best friend completely ended the friendship they had since third grade. I lost a ton of weight after that and got in the best shape of my life. I learned how to respect myself and never stay with someone who doesn't value the things I know I bring to the table. That relationship thickened my skin a lot and gave me new confidence I never had before. I care about myself and have learned how to be happy. Me, my brother and his girlfriend, who is also a very good friend, hang out together all the time. I hear my ex is miserable. Number 20. She thought she had my permission. During the Fallout 4 release week, I told her I was going to be staying home that weekend to play as much as I could. She asked what she was supposed to do, and I told her to go out with her best friend, girl, and have fun. She fooled around with her best friend's roommate instead. 
Cherry on top was that she admitted she had been fooling around with this guy for a while, so every time she did spend the night over there, she was cheating on me. Her best friend's boyfriend was the one who told me about it. How she always talked behind my back about me to my girlfriend and basically set them up and encouraged the cheating. He and I are still friends to this day. At least this dude found a friend who is definitely a bro for life.